Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. In this question, we're being asked to prove that the only integer solution to this equation, x minus a times x minus b times x minus c times x minus d minus 4 equals 0, we need to prove the only integer solution to that is a plus b plus c plus d on 4, where a, b, c, and d are unique integers. All right, so this is quite a tricky challenge because at first glance it can be hard to know where to start. Um, and if you encounter a question like this on an exam and you haven't had a lot of practice with these kind of questions, it can be quite daunting because really there is no formula or single approach that lets you work these things out. It often takes a level of creativity and um, just unique thought. Uh, to, to work these things out. So what I'm going to do is show you how I think about it and an approach that I think uh, works, um, but that's not to say it's the only approach. There's probably quite a few ways you could try and go about proving this. But the way I'll show uh, involves just a, a few little moments of creativity that then can get you to the right outcome without any particularly complicated math. It's all pretty basic, but it just requires some unique ways of looking at things. So the first step I would take to, to deal with this question is I'd bring the 4 over. So we'll get x minus a, x minus b, x minus c, x minus d is equal to 4. And then the next thing I, I want to kind of do is noticing that the left-hand side of this equation involves multiplying four numbers, it would be helpful if the right-hand side of the equation also was multiplying four numbers. Now four I know is two squared, so that's a good place to start. So four is equal to two times two. There's not a lot more I can do there with that, so I'm just going to multiply by 1 by 1. And at first that may look like an odd thing to do, but you'll see soon why th this is quite helpful and this can give us a starting point to then go about getting to this solution. So if it is the case that these four things multiplied together equals these four things multiplied together, then we can start to um, uh, kind of match up these items. So I could say x minus a matches to 2. x minus b, the second item here, matches to the second item here. x minus c matches to 1. And x minus d also matches to 1. And you could then do some rearranging to, to have a, b, c, and d uh, as the main items. So we'd get a is equal to x minus 2. b is equal to x minus 2. C is equal to x minus 1, and D is equal to x minus 1. Now, that all so far seems okay, except we start to get a problem, or we hit our constraint, because we're told A, B, C, and D are unique integers, yet here we see A and B have the same formula, and C and D have the same formula. So we can't fully rely on this, we can partly rely on it, but we need another like trick, I guess you could say, or another way of looking at this, because right now we can't have these two and these two solutions being the same. And the next trick to think about, so the first trick was getting four into the multiplication of four numbers. The next trick is to say, what if I was to multiply each of these elements by negative one? So if I was to say negative 1 times x minus a times negative 1 x minus b times negative 1 x minus c times negative 1 x minus d 
equals 4. Now I can do that because all of these negative 1s, the negatives will all cancel, meaning I've in effect multiplied this left hand side by 1, which is okay because multiplying anything by 1 just gives you whatever you had. But what it lets me do now is to re rewrite this left hand side to be a minus x, b minus x, c minus x, d minus x equals 4. And again, we'll write that out as 2 times 2 times 1 times 1. And now here, we can do the same thing with this matching. So I'll say a minus x is equal to 2. Therefore, a is equal to x plus 2. Same thing here. b minus x is equal to 2. Therefore, b is equal to x plus 2. c minus x equals 1. Therefore, c equals x plus 1. And finally, d minus x equals 1. Therefore, d is equal to x plus 1. Now what I can do is I've effectively laid out two sets of solutions to this equation, but when I want to have the constraint that a, b, c, and d are unique, then what I can do is I can just pick. I can say, let's take a is x plus 2, or sorry, x minus 2, and let's take b as x plus 2, because now they're not the same. Let's take c as x minus 1, and d as x plus 1. And now, just over here, what I'll do is I'll say, if, if these are the solutions, what do we get when we add up a, b, c, and d? So let's just do it. a plus b plus c plus d is equal to x minus 2 plus x plus 2 plus x minus 1 plus x plus 1. So all I've done is I've taken the a, the b, the c, and the d that I've selected, and I've inserted it into this formula. The minus 2 and the plus 2 cancel, the minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel. So that gives me x plus x plus x plus x, which is 4x. So if I rearrange for x here, I get x is equal to a plus b plus c plus d on 4, which is the criteria that we were told, or is the solution that we were told is what you get when you have this criteria that a, b, c, and d are unique. So that's essentially my proof. I've taken the equation rewrote it in a format that was a slightly bit more helpful, matched up the items on the left hand and right hand side, and found solutions for A, B, C, and D. And then I did a little trick where I multiplied everything by negative one to then get me this slightly different format that gave me another set of solutions. And when I apply this criteria of, of a, B, C, and D being unique, meaning I mix and match these two sets of solutions to make sure I get unique outcomes, I end up with a solution that satisfies this criteria. So again, I'm not saying that's the only way to prove it. There probably are a few other ways that could get you to the same place. But I think this is a uh, quite a neat way of getting to the proof without having to rely on any advanced solving of quadratic equations or higher level polynomials. Um, I've kind of sidestepped all of that and just used basic mathematical ideas to, to get to this proof. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, uh, you know, again, I wouldn't worry too much if this is not something that would jump out at you immediately. It'd take a lot of practice to to be able to be faced with these kind of questions and um, kind of know what to do. 
So as I mentioned at the beginning, the key is really just lots and lots of practice and just building up a toolkit and some experience with uh, all the different techniques that can help you tackle these problems. All right, tick boom.